like an executive office suite. Yeah. You know, but like the setup. big, yeah. like I have a big business now and I'm going to have all my employees come to this big office. So those are the spaces that are really having a hard time being filled. Mm. Um, so people in the industry of where we are is, are talking about like, do we convert those to housing? Mm-hmm. Well then what, what, yeah. off, what's business, buildings are actually going to be easier and more affordable to do that with. There's a whole bunch of stuff you could Google about that. Yeah. And you throw a six letter word in there, which yeah. is parking. Ah! Oh. Parking's always the And then like, do we... Seven? Yeah. Hey, it was a, it was a good, good shot in the dark. <laughs> Try it. Are there ways One that for two. we yeah. can in- incentivize... Parking. Well, this is the season finale of season four. We have not been canceled. Tiffany always laughs at me when I say that. But the, the powers that be have not canceled this indie podcast here. And we are this is episode eight, season finale. And before we end the season, we have some very special guests in the studio. Alice Clark and Lindsay Payne Johnstone with the uh, Downtown Bellingham Partnership. You both do so much for that core sector, but it does it, it emanates out to the rest of the community. Um, and I'm just going to quote what Alice said about the, the, the community living room. I love that. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk more about that, but yeah. tell me a little bit more for those that don't know much about the downtown Bellingham partnership. Um, besides maybe they go to downtown sounds and that's their insight into it. Mm-hmm. What do you do? What is your, your role in that downtown core, um, in Bellingham? Yeah, we, um, are the main champions. I think mm-hmm. I like that word of the downtown district. So we are supporting the entire neighborhood, um, property owners, employees, employers, residents, visitors, um, community members that come into downtown. And we do that in, I, I always kind of, my own brain just thinks of like what people see and then maybe the stuff they don't see in the, in the background. And so what you will see, most people like think of downtown sounds because it's just like that signature event that's Mm -hmm. so important um but we do other events throughout the year we also do a lot of promotions <clears throat> and activities just drive people downtown get people into the neighborhood circulating around um going out to eat or shopping um, we also do place making activities place activation activities which would be activating spaces with art um, or programs um, our team also does all the landscaping downtown, the hanging baskets, the cleaning of downtown. We also have the graffiti program, so we're removing tags as quickly as they come up, or we're trying to. Um, we have a safety ambassador team. So those are the things you're going to see as you kind of go around downtown. And if you see those things, you're going to think, partnership does that. Um, and do either of you want to sleep at all? You just described a lot of different jobs. Do you sleep? That's my big question. We sleep, but sometimes we wake up and think about the, those some, things. All the things, yeah. I think I get more sleep than this one does. Yeah. yeah. And then behind the scenes is a lot of a lot of business support, truthfully. Um, and we've really needed that support over the last few years with the pandemic. And there was the initial start where everybody was locked down. And people were trying to navigate all the health and safety requirements. All the businesses are trying to do that. And then they now have continuing um, cost of goods are increasing. Mm-hmm. Staffing still an issue. So we were doing some of that. We were doing, you know, kind of a more of balanced yeah. range of things. And then when that happened, we just all were like, I guess we're economic first responders. Mm. <laughs> okay, let's learn how to do that. Yeah. Um, and we did. We figured it out, and we just kept supporting them. So um, one program that came out of uh, that and other things is our city blog program, which is a lot of business support. So we've, deci- we've um, divided the downtown into several districts that are led by a staff member and two business owners. And so each of those districts comes together to solve problems, um, create new events, just support each other. 
And so that was really important just to be like, everybody, we've all been hunkered down, mm -hmm. yeah. trying to survive. Like, let's talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Let's work together to do really positive things and talk about our challenges and work together. Um, and so those are the, some of the things we're doing right now. And then there's a lot of advocacy work so we can, those leaders actually in that um, program can meet regularly with the mayor. Mm -hmm. And so they can directly talk That's about powerful. what's yeah. going on yeah. so he can hear them, um, which is really important. So do you want to add anything? Um, that was a really good summary. I, I think I love, we always say that we're just like, our role is to facilitate. So kind of just like with that city block role, like that, or that program, like we were like the conduit between, um, yeah, between city leadership, between businesses, even getting businesses to communicate with one another, like the commercial street block party mm -hmm. came out of the city block program. And like my role was to just connect the businesses on that block who are already really I think well connected more than in other areas, but we really do just facilitate conversations, getting people in the right room to create action and, and implementation. And I really think that's a big part of what yeah. we do behind the scenes. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Powerful. Yeah. 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 And so Roots in Bellingham, tell me a little bit more. Are you, you're both in Bellingham now. You got involved in this, this program, this very powerful program um, that was even more like was a part of this really painful, but also really powerful evolution through COVID. Mm -hmm. Like it was sink or swim really mm -hmm. for businesses, right? And people mm -hmm. yeah. a lot of the times during yeah. COVID. Um, tell me a little bit more about how did this program start and how did you get in, each get involved in this program? I'm going to defer to her. Yeah. She's been around yeah. longer than any staff member. Um, yeah. Well, it started in 2000. Yeah. Well, it was originally, we were called the downtown Renaissance network. Um, and the response to that was the mall and a lot of, you know, our bigger department stores and, and anchor businesses moving out of downtown. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the original null creation of the organization. Um, I started as an intern my senior year at Western. I was really drawn to the word renaissance and downtown. <laughs> wow, yeah, and funny. I was like, I can help put on concerts in an alley. This is amazing. That's funny. Um, so my, I started as an intern actually, like just focusing strictly on downtown sounds, event planning. Um, and then I was, when my internship was up, I was like, I don't want to leave. And so keep me. Um, keep me. Yeah. And, um, so then I was just like really part-time and, um, I've been here for 15 years. Today's actually my 15th year. 15. Ever. Hey. Yeah. We timed so it perfectly. We did. Yeah. You, how'd you know? Uh, um, so yeah, just really the, my evolution of just no. like, yeah. the cake. Yeah. <laughs> come on in. Okay. The cake's coming. Yeah. Yes. And then we kind of changed. Like once we kind of like downtown was, found its groove, found its footing. We kind of like, we don't need to be called like a Renaissance network. Mm -hmm. And so that's when we rebranded to downtown Bellingham partnership. Um, that was in like 2009. So yeah, that's kind of how my roots started at this organization. And I just, yeah, I mean, from what we were describing with like those being that facilitator and working with businesses, the relationships that we have are so personal and meaningful mm -hmm. and it's just really hard not to leave. <laughs> so don't go. Don't go. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I got my start and just, yeah, went from, I was part-time at Bayou on Bay bartending, part-time at the partnership. And then I really just realized I just wanted to, to be here full-time mm -hmm. and really fully dedicate myself um, to the mission. So. And was the program at that time, I mean, it sounds like you were there from very much like ground up point. Did you feel like at that time, was there just not the capacity to bring on enough people? Was it not a big enough uh, network yet? Was it just Correct. not developed yeah. enough, enough yeah. at that time? We've evolved and really grown as an organization so much, even just in the last, I would say, like seven or eight years, probably when Alice joined us. Um, but yeah, we were like very much people who were, who were there were um, part-time and at one point it was just our executive director at the time myself we were the only paid staff otherwise we just had we had interns so we were like retraining staff every three months every like mm -hmm. quarter it was a lot to to manage mm -hmm. um so yeah i would say like now we don't have we I, we don't offer, offer any internships we still get inquiries for that but we just were we're fully staffed um so yeah that's been a huge shift is like just having going from two staff members and lots of rotating interns to our team now. It was a lot yeah. to manage. Honestly. Is it like six full time? Six full time. But then wow. we have a couple seasonal landscape mm -hmm. evolution. Too, and yeah. Other, a couple other part time. And we just, yeah, at that time we weren't an established 501c3. So that obviously mm -hmm. brings about different funding opportunities. Mm -hmm. We weren't a Main Street organization yet. So we've really just grown in those ways that's allowed us to go our budget, take mm -hmm. on more things, grow our staff, and just have a way more consistent, dedicated team that, yeah, fosters more growth. 
Yeah. Right on. Yeah. yeah right. So <laughs> on the on the technical side, for those that are listening, and just the business side, go, being pre five hundred one c three and now, what was that like to be a community organization doing these things as a platform for other businesses in a charitable way, like in a way that yeah. a, that a nonprofit would do it, but not having the same abilities yeah. that you would you know post. Totally. Uh, that mm. incorporation. I'm trying to remember how we functioned. Yeah. <laughs> I think no, it was least, before my time. <laughs> yeah, we were like a membership organization at one point. So we yeah. had member dues. I think that that was helpful. Mm-hmm. And we had like a membership coordinator specifically. Um, but that would get, that got kind of confusing because we have a service area, but some members would be in that area and some non members. So, like, if you remember, but you weren't in the flower basket service area, you'd kind of be like, where's my flower basket? I'm <laughs> paying member dues. And so there's kind of these complications that we just decided every business that's offering downtown, we want them to feel like they're a member of our, of our work. Yep. So it was, that's kind of when we got rid of that program, but that's a way we kind of like supplement some of our costs. And mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, we couldn't like approach a business for a donation or a sponsorship because that whole, without having a tax write off. Right. So it yeah. made things a little challenging. We didn't, we relied a lot more, I would say on in-kind contributions. We yeah. asked for a lot more things for free than, <laughs> than we do now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, like downtown sounds, we, you know, we probably asked SSC to donate, all the recycle totes mm-hmm. that we needed. Yeah. Um, and granted that was when sounds was like much more smaller scale, but yeah, I think we it just is really... not that now it, it is, is, it is quite not. large and it's, it's quite loud. We've created yes. a monster, a beautiful oh monster. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I would say that's kind of how we operated, um, before those different opportunities arose after becoming a 501. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that answers that perfectly as usual. Um, you know, so I'm curious, like you, you talked about the downtown being kind of like the, the, uh, the community's neighborhood or mm-hmm. the community's living room. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me a little bit more about that. And, and like, you know, you have all these different areas. You mentioned big box stores in North mm-hmm. Bellingham, which is typically where big box stores are a little bit out of town, right? Mm-hmm. You've got the business district or a business district in Barkley, like a newer, mm-hmm. whatever it is down there. And you've got more like the green area just down South Bellingham. So Tell me a little bit more about how those things are all like, they're, they're all important. They all balance each other, but the core downtown is, for everybody. You said everyone's neighborhood. Yeah. 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 I feel that. Um, yeah, yeah, it's where everyone can come, um, and kind of intersect and see each other. Um, but for me, it's kind of like our particular downtown location, location, location. Mm -hmm. It's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. I think we all get a little bit jaded and don't really appreciate it. And it's people come into town and they're like, what? Yeah. Like you have these islands out there and then you have this mountain backdrop. I mean, mm-hmm. you can within that much time be out on a trail. It's very amazing. And so mm-hmm. that location of it combined with, we actually have predominantly locally owned, mm-hmm. really authentic businesses. Mm-hmm. It's not, I think Subway was here for a while, and I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean. They're it's, not local. It's, it's not, like they're, they're mainly <laughs> locally run businesses, yeah. um, and they're very passionate and dedicated, and they work really well together. They're really supportive of each other, which I think is kind of rare. Um, and so, it's also the place that. Um, there's a bunch of really great cultural institutions Mm -hmm. downtown as well. So when you put together the people, those businesses, the location, Mm -hmm. the cultural assets, something's always going on. Mm -hmm. There's something, something to do, new restaurant to go check out. It's just, to me, that's what's really beautiful about our particular downtown. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, as I had talked about previously, there's also the what that downtown brings to the community in different ways. So it, it brings that connection, that human connection with mm-hmm. everybody in the community, but it also generates a pretty good tax base that supports a lot of things that happen in our community from different services, EMTs, education, programs, projects that mm-hmm. serve all of us. So I think people should keep that in mind because it's really important. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And it's changed a lot. I mean, yeah. I've only been here 14 years. And mm -hmm. when I first got here, it was a $5 pitcher at uh, the up and up. up, and, up yeah. and now you can't get a beer for less than $7. But it's but you see this evolution of inflation. People have to charge yeah. what they charge. And I yeah. totally respect that. Yeah. And I accept that. But that was like the beginning of my context of Bellingham restaurants and businesses. Mm -hmm. Like the up. Five dollar pitcher mm -hmm. oh. and some, you know, Boundary Casa Bay, Pasa. Casa Que Pasa, gigantic burrito, yeah, R.I.P. <laughs> you know, we we miss them, um, but also there's been so many new additions that mm -hmm. that have like added to this melting pot of re like the, the culture's just gotten, I think, better and better, or more mm -hmm. robust. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit more about the combinations of businesses downtown. There's mm -hmm. there's retail, there's restaurant, there's services, there's nonprofits, mm -hmm. and they all are affected by economic shifts different differently, right? Mm -hmm, right. Retail is obviously it's a tough place, to, mm -hmm, tough mm -hmm. tough time to be in real retail, mm -hmm. but these smaller local businesses, while it may still be tough for them, are doing really they're doing better, I think, mm -hmm. in this downtown core mm -hmm. because of the glue that you you all provide that that banding together collaborative mm -hmm. mentality. Yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit more about the evolution. Like what have you seen happen over the last 10 or 15 years as, as you've been a part of this community? Cause there's, there's so many cool evolu evolutions. Do you want to go and then I'll go? We have, I mean, <laughs> it's no, we have a lot of F and B operators. We have a ton of mm -hmm. down like bars and restaurants. I mean, that is, uh, I think that's like, some of the newer businesses that we've seen have been those those businesses. Um, we have a good mix of retail. We need we need a kids store. I yeah, will say yeah. men's clothing. It's like yeah. a whole. Um, but I think like overall we do have a really healthy mix of of businesses. Our city block program that Alice referenced. That's where we get to experience a really good like interaction up from different industries mm -hmm. and hear how um, different industries are doing. Sometimes like you know businesses like a busy bar will be like I'm we're crushing it we're slammed we can't keep up whereas some retail might be like oh this is like a really slow week we don't know what's going on mm -hmm. so um yeah it's kind of like I guess the mix is I would say lots of bars and restaurants retail and our office space that landscape is definitely changing mm. coming out of COVID That's true. um really assessing what like obviously Faith Life was our biggest yep. employer mm -hmm. um I had a question about that today actually about what's happening with some of those empty spaces some are for lease now so just trying to get a handle on like what's going to become of those spaces mm -hmm. um we've checked alice's research like different trends in different communities like those changing into i don't know different types of retail or, or ground level mix mm -hmm. like used mixed use but um yeah I, I would say the storefront or the new office space is going to be something to keep an eye on for what's going to happen yeah. to those yeah and it's so like, there's some main hubs. There's uh, there's like there's railroad. And mm -hmm. it, one thing that's been weird, Tiffany and I were talking about yesterday was like, it's really cool to see these like little, not little, but like you see like Grand have with all these businesses popping in mm -hmm. over there and seeing all these complimentary, like really yeah. awesome businesses mm -hmm. that are there. Yeah. Then you see what is it called? Restaurant Row, where you've got Bayou, you've got yeah, all yeah, of the yeah. mm -hmm. Goat Mountain, Black Sheep, Jack's yeah, Bar. Um, and you know, just up the street is Jux. You have these like little pockets. like pockets yeah. that mm -hmm. are like very complimentary. Like when, when we yeah. go out on date night, we're going to go to yeah. Black right. Sheep, sure, yeah. Jack's, yeah. 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 and maybe over to Cabin or something. You know, it's yeah. like this nice right. little hub. Um, have you seen businesses band together on purpose? Is it on location or is it just like this? Oh, I could. It just seems like it happens organically. Yeah. yeah. Truthfully. Yeah. Like that area yeah. that you just described is, is kind of branded the arts district. Mm -hmm. um, and like that, like, that corner where like it's Bayou and Holly restaurant row and cabin. That's kind of like what we call the gateway to the arts district. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Obviously where downtown sounds happens. Um, state street. I know can sometimes you strip for mm -hmm. that before. Um, and that's... yeah, of course, railroads. Yeah. Kind of different mm -hmm. pockets. Um, but yeah, I think it all just kind of happened organically. Obviously restaurant row that all came out of COVID mm -hmm. like the, the vent or the st uh, street or being on that yeah. side of the street. But yeah. Yeah. I love the evolution too of the outdoor seating. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we never thought about it here because we're freezing our ass off yeah, here, know. you know, but then there's like, we, we had to, and everyone was, I think you guys are advocating for mm -hmm. bring your blanket. Oh yeah. That bring whole, your own blanket. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was and, our BYOB yeah. campaign. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was awesome. It's, it's, yeah. there's nothing like being outside. Yeah. yeah. Um, being inside is great. It's part of the ambiance, but yeah. the fresh air is it's very European. It's very European. Then you go for a walk, a nice stroll <laughs> to like, you know, walk off your meal too. But yeah. Um, Let's talk briefly about COVID because a huge evolution in 
our downtown and challenges, but evolution obviously mm-hmm. comes from, from, from the struggle a mm-hmm. lot. Yeah. Um, what, what did you, like, how did you, how did your platform evolve and change? What did you see as the biggest challenge for, for businesses downtown? <laughs> Where do we start? Which one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like we were all just blindsided. So that initial like, oh, we have to just isolate and there's no activity. That was a really big deal. Um, we rely on eyes on the street and people being on the street. And so that was that was really hard. And then. I think businesses just trying really hard to um, navigate all of the health and safety requirements. Do I need to build a plastic thing? Do mm-hmm. I need to supply hand sanitizer? Um, yeah. What's the new and state And we've mandate? never been there right. before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then you, who's getting sick? Yeah. Um, if somebody gets sick, then everything has to shut down for a while. Right. Yeah. It's just, it was amazingly hard. Um, mm. Luckily, also during that time, we were able to work with other organizations um, in the state and other resources to get funding. And to, that's what was felt like the most rewarding thing to do at the time would be like, look, there's a grant, apply for it. Yep. Look, there's some funding over here. Yep. Like, here's some lifelines, right? Um, giving them those kind of resources and just as much educational resources as we could um, having meetings by zoom to just talk to each other and figure zoom. it out. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Different oh, God. Experts come in there so everybody can learn what to do. Um, yeah. I think that period was the most challenging. What's great is that we see that there's slow pulling out of that. Mm-hmm. What they are saying businesses is that the cost of goods are definitely going up. So mm-hmm. that's probably why you see those cost increases is that mm-hmm. um, most of them are really trying to wrangle their costs right now. Um, Do you want to add anything to that? or? Um, I always say this was like our silver lining with COVID mm-hmm. was um, a lot of our public facing things that we're known for, like downtown sounds and our events, we obviously can do for like mm-hmm. two or three years. Um, so it was kind of a, a way to show up and it's true. do more of like our economic development, mm-hmm. economic yeah. vitality. Like reallocation reall- reall- really of time. time and yeah. And, and just show up for yeah, businesses yeah, yeah. in the community in a different way. Um, yeah, I agree with that. And it was like, it, it, like, even though it was really scary and challenging, it definitely strengthened a lot of our relationships with our stakeholders and our constituents and mm-hmm. to see businesses kind of like come together and really rely on each other. We facilitate a bar and restaurant network. Um, we're still meeting via Zoom, trying to meet in person soon, but we had so mm-hmm. many businesses show up. We used to host them every two weeks mm-hmm. with like 20 to 30 businesses on the call, sharing resources. Like, what are you guys, how are you processing phases? What are you doing mm-hmm. for sanitizer? How are you sourcing funds? And then right. we were just, again, that that conduit and that facilitation mm-hmm. of, of um, communications and conversations to, to help get people what they need while we were mm-hmm. figuring it out ourselves, <laughs> you know, yeah. and like we did some, like we did a virtual art walk, um, in April of 2020. And we were like, like people like Rihanna for who owns fringe was doing, you know, just like Instagram live, but she like had a bunch of sales that night and just figuring out ways that we could still show up and be the party planner, um, mm-hmm. through virtual means. Like we did a virtual downtown sounds, mm-hmm. which was interesting. Um, but yeah, it was, I would say for how like challenging and kind of like obviously scary everything was, we, we kind of pivoted really quickly to try to just maintain any like vibrancy that we could Mm -hmm. like. And along side of that is the loss of revenue from our events. So Mm -hmm. as an organization ourselves, we were like financially, like, how are we going to do this? Mm -hmm. And we did get some funding and we you know, did different kinds of things with unemployment just to kind of weather it all. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was kind of, that part was kind of hard where it's like, okay, we're needed more than ever, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we're also like trying to figure out how we're going to financially do this. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So you're Um, dealing with this almost, you're dealing with the same, in a sense, the same issues that people you're 
you're, you are supporting and being the platform right. for, yeah. you're going through the same stuff. So it's almost, it's, it's easy to translate that because you're like, Hey, we're doing, we're all in this together, yeah. but my role is still to support you all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's exactly. interesting. Yeah. Yes. I found myself not doing events really for the most part and like helping navigate streetery applications, which right. was like doing on-site visits. And yeah. when all the businesses on that 200 block of Holly approached us and they're like, can you help us facilitate closing down Holly Street? That was a crazy project involved right. with the pandemic. When Holly Street was actually closing that morning, I was like, is this really happening? Yeah. Um, that that had a lot of, of pros and cons and strong, a lot of strong opinions in mm -hmm. both directions. Um, Business that, owners, no way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, and just even like, you know, community members would be like, why is Holly Street closed? What's happening? Um, but yeah, that was a really- <laughs> You will love experience. it. It'll be fun. Don't worry. Yeah. It'll be good for them too. Yeah. 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 And just kind of seeing how those kinds of projects that came out of it was yeah. interesting. Well, it was yeah. interesting too how like the, there was relaxation of some of the permitting requirement you know yeah. what i mean so Wait, that can be done so you yeah. know before yeah, that be like this, <laughs> this 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 that happened and they're like so he's like just whatever we gotta do let's yeah. do it which was a new thing too yeah. yeah and just to see like oh you could eat outside in a parking space and create a you yeah. know what i mean you can't so do, a lot of things were lunches, tried yeah. that weren't tried before <laughs> so i kind of see that as a good part of what happened is yeah. that it's okay to experiment. It's okay to try something new. It's not going to be the end of the world. Like yeah. we don't have to do it exactly from the book all the time, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And honestly, I don't know if we ever would have considered closing that block of Holly street for downtown sounds, but two years ago, the, they, the year was so blend. Um, when we were kind of back, I guess it was blah. 2022, <laughs> we were, so with the parklets being on that left side of the street, our traffic control plan has us close the right lane, mm -hmm. turning on into the event. So then we're just picturing all these cars coming down Holly being funneled mm -hmm. into one lane only with right. hundreds of people walking around everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so we were like, let's see if we can close Holly Street. They did it before for the Holly Plaza. We, like we have a traffic control plan. So I made the ask and it worked out. It's, it was mainly to address traffic concerns and just like add Obviously, downtown sounds is crowded, mm -hmm. and with there still being some social distancing and masking w requirements, we're like, let's give attendees more space. Mm -hmm. And now we just have that as a part of downtown sounds, is we mm -hmm. just close Holly Street now, yeah. which is cool. And I don't think we would have really considered evolution. that before. Yeah. 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 So I don't want to go too far down this road, but this is, a, I think, this is a really important factor with what happened during COVID. Mm -hmm. So you've got people in all sorts of different areas of the their personal beliefs, their political beliefs, all mm -hmm. of these things. And you've got like health, like the, mm -hmm. this is what the state mandate is. And then you've got people that are saying, I don't need to do that at all. And you're like, well, you should do it. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. And then there's the people that are like on the other end of the spectrum, which are enforcing beyond, above and beyond. But your role is just to support the businesses. How did, how did you, how did you do that? That sounds like a lot of different opinions and very mm -hmm. strong, opinions, I'm sure, mm -hmm. um, on either end. What was that like for, for you both to just keep that whole the whole thing moving forward without getting like, and helping them without getting yeah. too, you know, sucked into whatever I, additional drama? Yeah, I think we really just were like, we're following the governor's guidelines. Yeah. And, and that's like, just we that's I think we just referenced that as a way to stay neutral. Yeah, just, or, definitely. Or, yeah, I mean, I do not remember hearing like a lot of trouble, like mm -hmm. a lot of businesses saying I'm having obstinate people yeah. who don't want to follow the rules that I've posted on my door. Yep. Um, occasionally, but yeah, I recall like, when, oh man, this feels like a time warp, but yeah, when I think the yeah. phases got a little more relaxed and then mm -hmm. it felt more on the businesses. I think at one point it was like nice right, for them right. to have just like, th That's these true. are the state laws or the rules, you have to wear your mask. Right. And then things got a little more gray area and it was like more on the businesses to decide which direction they wanted to go. Mm -hmm. That's when they experienced That's true. some customers yeah. coming in and be like, well, I don't have to. And businesses being like, well, we're still requiring this for the safety. Yeah. Yeah, but That's I'm when working. things yeah. got a little dramatic. That's I true. Say. That's got, true. got interesting yeah. really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks for touching on that. That's all yeah. we need to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. No yeah. more politics. COVID's over. Yeah. COVID's over. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, all, we're all here in the same room. Um, I would love to talk about some of the um, the programs for business owners, um, because you know downtown sounds and a lot of these other uh, events are their revenue driving and their way of getting people down eyes on the street, as you mm -hmm. said. 
but there are some really amazing programs and other uh, you know uh, entities downtown that you work with to provide value to businesses like when when uh, you know the business the businesses were struggling during covid mm -hmm. you had all these this guidance on, hey, this is this is a good grant that you need to go look mm -hmm. into, or here's a great class you should go to, or here's a good person you should talk to. Um, tell me a little bit more about that, like behind the scenes, under the surface of the iceberg, essentially, that businesses in downtown, or if they are moving to downtown, have access to, you know, downtown sounds great, yeah. drives a lot of business, it's amazing, it keeps, mm -hmm. you know, money flowing into the organization. But let's talk about like, the stuff behind the scenes, the resources that people have. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, we partner with the Small Business Development Center. They were part, really tight partners during COVID as well because businesses, they needed support to figure out how am I going to adapt and adjust here. So definitely do a lot of referring to them. Um, the chamber is, you know, countywide, mm -hmm. but they do some really cool networking and other kind of events that, business owners really um appreciate i think um i would think i mean like with behind the scenes and, and resources for us i would like main street being like a main street you want to talk about the main street program oh i thought you were talking about partners mainly oh, okay. any of the yeah it's, take yeah. it where you want to take it yeah yeah it's kind okay of all so other there. support um yeah i'll let you talk about some micro grants but um so we are part of the Main Street Network, mm -hmm. which is a natural national network that started in the 80s, I believe, around the time of the malls coming into communities. And so it was really a revitalization um, organization to help communities figure out how to survive all that. Mm -hmm. So there's um, a program in each state. So we're part of the Washington State program so i think it's like 40 communities um in that program right now so we have access to all of their resources and all of their knowledge and all of their expertise we meet regularly as communities to share resources and learn more like different perspectives from yeah. other communities that are maybe are further down the road with a, a specific exactly. issue or challenge we all speak yeah. the same language and share all kinds of things and there's conferences the californians they're coming <laughs> <laughs> it's funny though because there's like you know Roslyn, yeah and everett right so yeah. there's like tiny and big so actually in that network the bigger communities like bellingham and everett and olympia and vancouver washington we're kind of slowly creating our little cohort because mm -hmm. we have issues in our downtowns that some smaller communities don't quite have right yep but um, part of that Main Street program in Washington State is that we have access to a Main Street tax credit program, mm -hmm. which allows a business to contribute. They would give a donation to us, and in return, they would get a 75% um, tax credit mm -hmm. on their B &O, state B&O tax. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. So the way it works, basically, is that they make a donation to us, let's just say $1,000 um, this year. And then when they go to pay their BNO tax next year, they would get that tax credit when they go online to do that. So in addition, depending on their circumstances, they could also potentially write the thing off mm -hmm. federally, right? So it's we always think it's like win, 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 right? Yeah. Because they are able to support, actually keep their taxes there be no taxes right in our community working mm. in bellingham versus being sent to olympia you don't know where they're going to be spent right mm -hmm. like right. it's kind of that knowledge like i'm really going to keep that money here mm -hmm. um so it's a great program um and we are able to raise through that program two hundred and thirteen thousand dollars. wow mm -hmm. and we're thirty thousand away from that right now for this year so we're kind of closing the gap. So that's a really big deal. It's time, guys. Yeah. Let's close <laughs> that really gap. Big deal. <laughs> it's a really big deal. Um, it's exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. So yeah. we're like, wow, you know, what other projects and programs and things can we do if we, mm -hmm. if we meet that? So mm -hmm. um, it's good for businesses. It's good for us. It's good mm -hmm. for everybody. So 
that's a great program. And then I'll let Lindsay talk about a couple other um, mm -hmm. opportunities for funding. Yeah, yeah, we definitely have, obviously, sponsorship mm -hmm. is huge. Um, WeQ has been our premier sponsor for Downtown Sounds for several years. And we also work um, with different organizations for to, to be able to provide micro grants. Um, two of those are our seasonal activation grants and then our storefront mm -hmm. improvement grant. Um, the storefront improvement grant we've been doing since like 2015, 2016. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. We used to, it's a matching grant, um, yeah. but we used to be able to award funds to one business per year. And now um, with some increased funding from uh, BQ, we're awarding three. So it's a grant nice. cycle that's made through September. But mm -hmm. the goal is for quick, um, kind of like, not cheap, but like quick, inexpensive yeah, yeah. Um, improvement. So like mm -hmm. exterior paint, um, window decals, planters, some lighting. Mm -hmm. So we've over the years, like last year, we well, we had makeshift, we've done um, Stockton's paint, we've done Wild Buffalo, we've done Rex Finery. Mm -hmm. um, and they're like, if you've seen the Wild Buffalo lately, just like, I don't think they've had an exterior like facelift in de like maybe decades. Yeah, it's and now part it's of the just, allure. Yeah, it's yeah. really fresh. Yeah. And they have the I Love You More mural mm -hmm. that was a part of it on the side. So it's just a way to enhance um, business storefronts and then also, you know, enhancing the entire block. Mm -hmm. So really proud of that program. Um, and then the seasonal activation grant was something that we did during COVID. Yeah. Um, it was to help activate sidewalks, storefronts with, you know, live music or, um, demos. I think I know Cuba Crazy Socks did a really cool like tie dye thing with theirs, yeah. and Veritas Media did a like disco like rollerblading thing right. in the commercial plaza. It doesn't so, surprise me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So just really unique ways um, to to bring people downtown mm -hmm. and, and create that vibrancy. So we yeah. Um, yeah. are hoping to continue those programs this year for mm -hmm. sure. But, yeah, yeah, those were like people were not feeling 100% comfortable with going inside mm -hmm. places. So we're like, okay, how do we do something where it's Outside, like, yeah. come down and yeah. explore anyway. Yeah. There may be a store that you do feel okay about going in, just kind of like, just getting people downtown. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to say a four letter word on camera here. <laughs> Hmm. M A L L mall. So mall is, is <laughs> sorry. I was just making sure that I didn't sound stupid there and it was actually four letters. Um, but you know, it's a part of a community, but it's also this like completely different world, mm -hmm. but you had referenced when malls started coming into towns, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. coming into town, you can get everything there from mm -hmm. your Jamba juice to your whatever else you need and never <laughs> leave. Yeah. Maybe just like <laughs> sleep there, whatever you don't ever need. But there's been this like really interesting, there's this huge growth. I was, as a kid would go downtown, this is mm -hmm. Seattle, but also would go to the mall. I was just mm -hmm. a mall rat, you know, just at the mall. But now we're seeing this interesting, especially in smaller communities. And please correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but I just noticed that the mall just had this huge change yeah. and downtown Bellingham is still there and yeah. it's still functioning. Mm -hmm. How does, I mean, how do you see this like ebb and flow? Like you, you saw the mall come into town and you're like, in any town, let's just say the mall coming into the to the Bellingham size town, mm -hmm. and you go, "What's this going to do for local businesses?" Mm -hmm. And then you saw it exist, coexist, mm -hmm. and then you saw, you know, times change. Tell me a little bit more about that, like that timeline, that progression of like this four letter word coming yeah, into town. Yeah. I'm not sure if I understand what you're asking. <laughs> yeah, cut. No. Yeah, cut. <laughs> Next question. question. Yeah, I just I think there's there, there's things that you can go to them. I don't go to the mall personally, yeah. but there's things that people, people do go do go to like the big yeah, box yeah, stores yeah, for, yeah. but then you have this core downtown and they coexist. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about that coexisting and what that's like when, when this is a, a, a town that really loves local and small business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that the mall there's, it's interesting because it's gone yeah. through its own evolution, mm -hmm. right? Like it opened and that was really exciting and everybody's going and all the stores are there. And then in the last few years when I'm gone, I'm like, where is everybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really feels different. So I think that malls themselves are trying to figure out their own evolution. Who are we? Yeah. 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 How are we going to recreate ourselves? And so mm -hmm. I understand like the library will have a temporary um, mm -hmm. place there. And I think there's new ownership there. 
I don't know. I mean, I don't think that we feel super threatened by them all. I feel like there's other places. I mean, I think what we would like is for more people who live north right. and into Canada would come downtown mm. versus like, oh, let's just go to the mall or let's just go to Costco. So that's kind of our challenge is like, yeah. no, that's like. But they're just shopping. There's like yeah. Go in yeah. There and if you want those. a hot topic in cinnabon, <laughs> yeah, you can go there. Exactly. Great, and get your cinnamon roll. But exactly, and yeah. I'm not sure what's going to happen in the future. I think yeah. there are kind of different ideas being tossed around mm-hmm. about how to could it be potential more services for people? Mm-hmm. Could it be potentially housing? Like. I don't know. Lots of ideas. I'm yeah. glad I'm not in that business. Yeah. <laughs> You're in the right business. Yeah. I think the mall is, I think competes more with online shopping and like Amazon yeah. than our, yeah. our exactly. independently owned businesses. Right. It's That's like right. if people, and obviously that trend grew during COVID, mm-hmm. but it's like for things that you could just get at Target, which you can like just get online good point. versus yeah. like, you know, <laughs> finding something unique, locally made earrings. And like, it's like up coming downtown is way more experiential. Mm-hmm. Like you're down exactly. there for a yep. destination, not necessarily convenience sometimes but yeah i think that's, that's been a huge shift with the mall yeah. um kind of having that shift in in, in mm-hmm. yeah the, not their decrease but like <laughs> yeah. not being as busy i just think those trends are, are a part of it yeah yeah and as you said i mean we are a community that really wants to support local so mm-hmm. that's a great thing mm-hmm. um and they want that experience mm-hmm. of like i'm actually i know the person that owns that shop mm-hmm. And I know the person that owns that restaurant and yep. I want to go down and support it's personal them. Personal relationships yeah. are important. Yeah. yeah. Very community. Yeah. So yeah. let's flip to online because um, local business, big box retailer, and then the, you know, the meta universe of Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, but every, like we've been in this progression, like there is something, there is always a draw to go downtown. Mm-hmm. We love going downtown. Mm-hmm. And then there's times that we, don't want to go downtown and we don't want to go anywhere and we want to just mm. be on our couch yep. and be big old couch potatoes yes. <laughs> and order like oh, i'm gonna order this online yeah how has that been for like the adaptation the evolution for downtown businesses because mm-hmm. everything is going online still mm-hmm. um and a big part of downtown downtown, downtown businesses mm-hmm. is that it's like going there getting eyes on the street having these events doing those things let's say let's go kind of back to covid when mm-hmm. there was this well can't really do that Mm -hmm. there's all there's all these restrictions on what you can do tell me a little bit more like did you see some big challenges with local like local and small businesses Mm -hmm. trying to find their way onto online i think a lot of uh, uh, retailers definitely added online store like i know brazen added an online Mm -hmm. store i don't i can't remember if fringe already had one in place yeah and whether or not they've maintained them i'm not quite sure i think i think fringe has yeah but um like Brazen and Seifert and Jones utilized mm-hmm. their alley for alley pickup. That's awesome. I know Greenhouse yeah. and Ideal did a lot of um, deli- like home deliveries. Wink mm-hmm. Wink certainly did a lot of home deliveries. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think, yeah, between online stores, like that was interesting during Shop Small Saturday, I think in 2020, instead of promoting like deals and offerings that we normally would, we were promoting how consumers could access right. these businesses. Right. So through private shopping appointments, um, if you weren't comfortable being around a lot of people, yeah, building online stores, utilizing curbside pickup, all yeah. those things. It was really yeah. fascinating. I think trends that are coming that I hear about in the main street circles and other is that um, people will have some success when they are able to marry both. Mm-hmm. And in particular, manuf- small manufacturing. Mm-hmm. And I think like... Mod sock. Mm-hmm. Uh, keep it crazy socks. Keep it crazy socks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like a really pretty good example of that. Um, breweries do it in a really big way, but you know, behind the scenes, they're like doing the socks, mm-hmm. mailing out the socks, and then they have their storefront presence, mm-hmm. right? So that's one thing that people are talking about happening with downtowns and also more shared spaces. So mm-hmm. let's four retailers get a mm. space work together like you're and you can see that some some places already where it's like 
I'm a barber, but we got a beer guy and we, yeah. you can get a cup of coffee. Um, Sounds like a great time. <laughs> Sounds like a great day. And, and you know like, what I mean? Like, yeah. how do we Sold. share the yeah. cost of yeah. this? Um, and that's kind of, I think, what, like, with those office spaces that are empty, it's kind of like yeah. seeing those kinds of collaboration mm. go into spaces like that, especially if they're street level. Yeah, street level. Mm. But that's a big deal. That's yeah. a big thing that we are all trying to figure out is how to replace the office workers. And we're, like, are we talking? A lot of those buildings have like retail on the bottom and then they yeah. have mm -hmm. office up or, you know, living up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Is there a lot of that that's still empty or is it starting to fill I up? I mean, office space is pretty, like 36% of what it was. Mm -hmm. um, wow. And so, you know, supposedly people are coming back to the office, but they're coming back in different ways. So mm -hmm. what we heard from... Um, property owners is that the smaller spaces, like I just am a person, I'm tired of working at home mm -hmm. and I got to have an office. I got something I got to do. Or yeah. Two people or whatever. Like an executive office suite. Yeah. You know, but like the setup. big, yeah. like I have a big business now and I'm going to have all my employees come to this big office. So those are the spaces that are really having a hard time being filled. Mm -hmm. um, so people in the industry of where we are is, are talking about like, do we, convert those to housing mm -hmm. well then what what yeah. off what biz buildings are actually going to be easier and more affordable to do that with there's a whole bunch of stuff you could google about that yeah. and you throw a six letter word in there which yeah. is parking ah! oh. Parking's always the, and then like do the we seven yeah hey, it was a it was a good good shot in the dark <laughs> try it are there ways one for two we yeah. can in incentivize parking yeah. <laughs> so how does a um, a city potentially or a county help subsidize office space mm -hmm. with you know the property owner um, for at least some period of time? So it's like a nonprofit, you know, just like can we populate the buildings? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is the main thing. How do we populate the buildings so that they're not empty? For one thing so they're not making any money off of it and probably losing money and then there's those people back out on the street right, right? so activity. that's yeah. what we've seen is like downtown during the day sometimes it's just like super quiet compared yeah. to it used to be it used to be people will go and breakfast meeting and lunch meeting and mm -hmm. i'll meet you for coffee and we'll talk over here and so all those people are circulating so we have to figure out how to get those people back mm -hmm. people that live core it's, it seems like live there's these work. like there's some main right? ma yeah live and work there's like mm -hmm. some main larger you know buildings that like the, there was the one that's down across from time and materials and mm -hmm. where other side bagels mm -hmm. yeah. bailey's mm -hmm. in the spot bailey mm -hmm. um and it's really interesting because i didn't really think too much about the fact there's these little s spots of like apartments and mm -hmm. condos these little patches throughout downtown mm -hmm. but there's nothing mm -hmm. major there's nothing there's not one big mm -hmm. apartment right. building right. or yeah um what about something like the nimbus i mean that or not the nimbus what's the what's the big building that the nimbus used to be in the towers. bellingham towers bellingham yeah. towers a better name for it yeah, yeah so yeah i'm not sure what their rate of vacancy rate right is is right now i think that um they've got a lot of those smaller spaces mm -hmm. so they're probably doing okay but man i really miss nimbus <laughs> yeah i've never been <laughs> My wife said she it's went. So she amazing. went to prom Such at Nimbus, and she view. talked all about. Yeah. Yeah, I said, well, I, I'm just I was here late. <laughs> oh, so. It's just like one of those places where we can just have a nice drink and look out over the whole mm -hmm. islands, and it's great. Bring it back. I know. Bring yeah. the Nimbus it's back. Stuck there, <laughs> waiting for someone. So, what are besides the use of the office space, bringing more, you know, living downtown? Um, what are some of the biggest challenges that you're seeing today? Um, you know, set aside COVID, never happened. Yeah. Completely gone. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> what What are you seeing as the biggest challenges that people need to know about that are in Bellingham that support local businesses or local business owners mm -hmm. or are going to become local business owners? Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. What are What are some of the things you see in the future as our biggest issues to tackle? Um, I think first we need to. So many cities around the country are dealing with the fentanyl crisis mm. that's happening. Um, we're one of them. We're having our own struggles with that. Mm -hmm. um, some state laws changed within the last 
two or three years that have really impacted that. Um, so that, I'm not sure how that's going to be resolved, truthfully. Mm -hmm. um, the mayor is, is, is working on it, mm -hmm. um, but it's a big, big, complicated issue. Mm -hmm. Super complicated. Um, so for me, that is, if, if we can get a handle on that, then it allows the business owner to stop paying attention to that daily, mm -hmm. which they, they do and really focus more of their energy on their business, which is what they should be doing and what we would like them to do. Yeah. So once that starts happening, then they start to feel that further relief. They, they free up bandwidth. It's like this yeah, bandwidth in the back of their, their exactly. brain that's constantly thinking about something exactly. that doesn't propel their business forward. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Um, and it's super hard because it could be that someone who has, you know, grown up in a, a bigger city and is familiar with city life, maybe like this happens in cities. Right? Yeah. yeah. And then other people are like, I just can't, yeah. I can't see it. I don't, I can't deal with it. And the poor business owner yeah. is like trying desperately to navigate their own business. So that's a lot what we are doing right now is that, um, I think there's a lot of counseling in what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. We're doing a lot of listening, active listening, and then we're going and doing a lot of advocacy work and talking about what we're hearing. And then we convert to very happy people mm -hmm. and do events. So it's, you know, it's very emotionally, it's, it's emotional work right now for us. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's hard. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you have your own stuff in your own life, right? So you're like hearing someone going to talk to the mayor and you're like, okay, let's put in a party. It's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, I just, right before the pandemic, we were on this trajectory where you could just see like we were growing. Um, things were really rocking people were coming into downtown and opening businesses. And I was like, Oh my God, this is like the tip. This is the point mm -hmm. where it's just going to. And so now we're like, okay, we're kind of, we're really doing pretty well, actually recovering from the pandemic. But then we have this other thing that is really complicated. So um, for me, that is going to be a challenge. And also, you know, we're growing as a city. Mm -hmm. When I moved here in 1980, I think it was like 40,000 people, 38,000 people. Yeah. Um, so more than doubled. Mm -hmm. And so then you have those stressors of just more folks. You're going to need more housing. You're going to need more services. So all these things are needed and we're trying to catch up, right? Mm -hmm. We're trying to like happen. It's happening. It was like slow and then it happened really quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It started booming. Yeah. And so it's like we're under this stress. So we're aware of the things and we're working on the things, but still it's going to take time. Mm -hmm. So I am, I remain incredibly hopeful about downtown though. I think that I, I probably wouldn't if I didn't know all the business owners and just know how passionate and dedicated and um, committed they are. Um, and that's, you know, we had a, we put out a survey recently and, and that's what you really pick up on mm. is that, yeah, this is really hard, but I'm in it, yep. you know? And so that feels really good to me. And I think that we kind of go through, you know, the seasons too. So the winter's like, ah, <laughs> yep. you know, and then it starts to warm up. Like we're going to have a downtown, um, neighborhood meeting on 420 at Boundary Bay, where we're going to be talking a little, about a little bit longer than normal, <laughs> go slower than normal, <laughs> where we're going to be like, um, bringing all the promoters, not promoters, but, um, producers of all the various events that mm -hmm. are kind of happened from spring to fall. And so they'll each have a few minutes to kind of talk about their event and when it's happening and how you can attend. And if you want to volunteer to help them, and so 
we put up the hanging baskets, you know, it's kind of like this time of year we're like, okay. And then more people come down. They just naturally come down. Where, where have you all been? You yeah. know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And then the tourists come in Ugh. and then like graduations happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's always kind of like this, like if we can just get to April. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of businesses, I think a lot of different platforms and yeah. businesses and organizations have the same feeling. I know we feel it in our business yeah. as well. It's like, we like this slow. And then we're like, okay, it's yeah. been slow for too long. All right. And then it, then it explodes. And we're like, I wish it wasn't so fast. Yeah. 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 And so. then you have eyes on the street. It just yeah. changes. Absolutely. There's a shift that happened because you're like, people are on the street. And other people see all the other people, and it just has a bit different vibe. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? Crowd attracts a crowd. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So we need perpetual spring. Perpetual, perpetual spring. spring. <laughs> where, where do you see the most opportunity for, for growth downtown? I mean, there's there's all these little pockets that have, like, I, I use Grand Ave as a, mm-hmm. as a pretty good example where I think Astoria and then Thousand Acre went in, um, and then it kind of just, like, and uh, Bar Chicati, and then, mm-hmm. yeah. um, and it sounds like Red Light might be moving. Red Light is moving into the Thousand, thousand Acre. Yeah, then there's cool right the now. Turkish Coffee Shop, yeah. which I've heard is amazing. Mm-hmm. I have not been. Mm-hmm. Clap me in irons, but I will be going. <laughs> yeah. But I've heard it's amazing. But then now, now all of a sudden, this place in college, and then Mount Bakery is right on the corner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things where, like, that part of town when I was in college was, there wasn't really anything over there. The Grand was oh, over yeah, there. We'd yeah. go, you know, get beers at the Grand, but, yeah. like, yeah. It was, it was kind of isolated. Yeah. Are there other areas that you're seeing kind of open up as potential pockets for those, these little like hubs of businesses? I mean, state street has mm. certainly been growing of like, and just yeah, like that vibrancy extending all the way mm. down to the roundabout. That's, that's new. I mean, yeah, it's ish. a long stretch. So yep. we're kind of trying to get those folks to work together to do some projects and stuff. Um, What'd you call it? The, the hip strip? I don't know. We called that. We don't but call I it. Sorry. No, no, Somebody no. did. Someone so, called like so I just I'm anonymous that person point. called yeah. it that, yeah. which I think is kind of catchy. Yeah. But yeah, we just did um, a first like spring on state event yeah. there a couple of Saturdays ago. It was the same day as opening the farmers market, but it was an egg hunt, family friendly egg hunt, and then we were we did that in partnership with Time and Materials in mm-hmm. their courtyard and had like you know a bunch of family friendly activities. That was the first time we did something kind of really intentional just for State Street. And I think we'll probably make that a new tradition for downtown. It was really sweet. Definitely learned some lessons. We need some people power to replenish the eggs. That part was stressful. <laughs> replenish <laughs> eggs, huh? Yeah. yeah I was like, oh, my goodness. Um, but, yeah, I would say because of the the recent energy happening from, you know, Shake and Shine all the way down to Flat Stick mm-hmm. is awesome. And it's um, – we do a lot in the arts district in that area that we referenced earlier, right? Like mm-hmm. downtown sounds. A lot of our retailers are all – in that hub. So it's where a lot of our wine walk energy focuses. So it felt um, pretty good to do something just along state street because of the recent growth that's just kind of developed mm-hmm. there. Other pockets, I would say, I don't know. I don't know either. I, I mean, Bellingham the... cider company being on that end kind of brings. Mm. I love that, that spot. There. Yeah. And Get then honest. also now structures with their, with their burgers. That right? is, <laughs> yeah. It's like, it took me <laughs> home to, I told them, uh, like Dick's Burgers, but way higher quality. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like driving one hand. Yeah. Where are they? Which... Um, in the old Chuck and the Brewery. In the old Chuck and the yeah. Brewery. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I they're right they there. Oh, they already. Yeah, yeah I went so with a friend, and cool. I got one, and I was like, well, well this is take me back to a moment where I just ordered another one. So I just yeah. got another one. I was like, oh, hmm, that's good. Yeah. Could probably do three. <laughs> and obviously the granary and the waterfront and such, yeah. like, are we we want to be brought into the fold of that because, mm-hmm. like, promoting um, the walkability, like, you can be at Bayou and be at Trackside and, like, five minutes mm-hmm. like right. there isn't we, we want to make sure those neighborhoods feel like there's cro- like crossover there yep. yeah. um physically promotionally um yeah so that's probably just obviously another area that's going to be growing right yes mm-hmm. so um just wanting to be involved in that process yeah. And, yeah. And such as well. and i know that we don't have to get too far down this road either but like maybe just a surface level what is happening with the waterfront i mean so it, there's trackside huh? was such an amazing ad- addition yeah. We go the summer. We we actually wouldn't mind going there in the winter. We're not really like yeah. that turned off by bad weather. Yeah. Um, but it was an amazing, more of a temporary mm-hmm. like grant, right, for yeah. the the track mm-hmm. and the pump track and for mm-hmm. that while they're developing that. What's mm-hmm. what do you see is happening? What's going on down there for people that are listening? Well, I think the yeah. condos are yep. slowly getting built. Yeah, very slow. Very slow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
and then I believe there's going to be a hotel conference center in the board mill building that mm -hmm. has those murals on the top of it. Mm -hmm. That's going to probably be the next big thing that happens. I do believe they're going to keep that whole track site area for a while. And then people will cry and protest. When... Yeah. If they... <laughs> and then they'll say, yeah, we'll make a park. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. It is a very cool scene down there. I mean, obviously during the, the COVID years, it gave people a really big outdoor space to mm -hmm. hang out in. And it is a pretty cool, unique scene. And yeah. Yeah. And I think like the other thing that's happening is I think it's called the Millworks mm -hmm. project. Have you heard about that? Heard of it. Don't know much about yeah, it. Yeah, so that's on the yeah. other side of the tracks, but it's still down there. And mm -hmm. that will be a combination of a food campus um, where they'll be have commercial kitchens and other things. And then some really um, affordable housing. And I think they're just starting to break ground. Mm. So that's a really cool Progress. community. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's great because, I'll be honest, um, is it some of the development that was happening before or proposed development from Harcourt. Mm. It just didn't feel like us. It mm. just I don't know. It's it's a it's a new addition to Bellingham, mm. but it doesn't have any like even with the newer stuff that gets developed, yeah. at least attempting to have some roots in Bellingham. That's right. It can be new yeah. and not be an old the brick reflective building. Of our community, yeah. Yeah, right. But reflect yeah. When yeah. I saw the you know drawings I was like, oh, this this could be anywhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I kind of, it's a weird blessing in a way um, that that relationship changed mm -hmm. because it gave the community the opportunity to really see what else we could do. Yeah. Like the board, the that board mill building that I'm talking about for the hotel and conferences is led by local people. Mm -hmm. um, one of them was on our board and then the mill works. Um, and just the container people, the mm -hmm. container village down there and all those. So it's like, it's organically happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Bellingham does. So right. much more reflective yep. of who we are. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So it's very cool. I like yeah. it. Keeping Bellingham uh, growing and keeping up with the times in certain areas, but also staying funky. It's like got this cool, mm -hmm. right. grounded funkiness to it that we all love. Yeah. Well, before like the pandemic, like you said, we were taking off and that's what we were kind of conversations we're talking about. Like, mm -hmm. how are we going to retain our soul yep. and our authenticity. If we're going to grow this fast and change, mm -hmm. like that was really the challenge that mm -hmm. we were talking about. So I think we're doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Have you felt like a lot of people, as, especially with you've got this entity Harcourt that's come in and, and is, is doing something that's that intentionally is good. It's, it's growing that area, but in a way that is not, it was at the time, not us mm -hmm. as Bellingham. Yeah. Do you feel like there was a good banding together of the, of the minds of Bellingham and, and the leaders of Bellingham to, 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 Hey, well, I get, let's steer that ship a little bit more this way. Um, I think so, but it was mainly the port. Yeah. Right. A lot of it was the port staff and the port commissioners who made a lot of those decisions. And we're just like, had to do the hard work of like, maybe we got a semi breakup with our yeah. port. Yeah. Right. Which semi, is, just friends with hard. benefits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Semi breakup. And then I think it was Rob Fix, actually, yeah. the director who was really into mountain biking and was like, let's do this for a yeah. while. Yeah. Let's yeah. see what that looks like. Creative. I like it. So, yeah, I have to give that credit to them for sure. So let's talk briefly about the insider cards, because at the end of each episode, I like to get involved in business of the platform. Yeah. Um, there's probably three people that are, are that are going to be listening to this, this show and are going to message me immediately <laughs> for this, but I'm going to do um, five insider cards for mm. people that listen to the show. Cool. Um, again, they, I know that like the first three people that, that are going to message me are, shout uh, out Samir, so, shout out Samir <laughs> uh, Brendan, uh, and, and, uh, and Eric, those are the three people that I've, I've found out like really engage. Love it. And then, I might buy one for my mom. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, it's Mother's Day soon. It is. Yeah, you go. Take there care you of those go. moms. It gives you a round. So the insider cards, because I'm doing five, for those that are listening mm -hmm. and for those that are going to go buy one because they want to get more involved in downtown Bellingham, um, the core, what does an insider card, what does it do for you? How does it get you involved? I'm going to let her. And what does it cost? 
So it's it's a tiered program. So we we refer to insiders as our downtown loyalty program. So it's not necessarily a fee. You more sign up. Um, the minimum level is five bucks, and for five bucks, um, it's a every so it's a donation every uh, month. But that's when you get those um, business offerings. So I believe Black Sheep right now is free guac with when you guacamole oh. when you show your insider card. Wow. Yeah. Um, like, is that unlimited free guac? <laughs> I don't know if they or tried like maybe one like, dollar. Yeah, I'm just yeah. kidding. Yeah, probably. Walks on short supply. So yeah, yeah. Um, I know Fringe does twenty percent off one item. I believe their planet is twenty percent off one item, and it's not probably limited to like one per day. But like during Christmas, like I went shopping at both those places, and every time I was, I got my yeah, which is awesome. They they could cap it at like once a month, but they don't. It's great. Um, but yeah, they're they're so for the five dollar level. You get those business offerings, and I believe we have up to 30 businesses, mm -hmm. if not more. And all those deals are listed yeah. on our website. And it is a range from um, food and beverage to retail mm -hmm. and to, I think, services. I think they're, I think I want to say upfront theaters maybe on there. I think a yoga studio is on there. Mm -hmm. um, you can find out at downtownbellingham.com. But yeah, you <laughs> go and you choose, you can do a five, a 10. Or 25 plus. So, and then each tier comes with an increase in perks. Mm -hmm. Being the 25 one, you get um, automatically upgraded to our VIP experience at Wine Walk. We have a VIP um, in our beer garden. So, you get your automatically get to go in there. Right this way, so, ma'am. Yeah. 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 That's way. actually, guess what? Huh. You get a chair. You get a chair and you can oh. sit We'll actually go get your beer for you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Massages, no, but. You can avoid yeah, I was thinking yeah. that's Snacks. the next step. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you sign up, we'll be promoting this once we start announcing Downtown Sounds um, details, but it's like we it's a skip the line promotion. So if you sign up to be an insider right then and there, you can show your card and you don't have to wait in line. You can just line through lines and traffic so. yeah yeah but so it, it is um yeah it's so there, there's card holders there's businesses doing offerings and yeah for only five bucks you get to just splash your card and in the participating businesses to yes. to get that deal yeah. it's a pretty cool program and then obviously the money goes to supporting our our work so yeah. and we appreciate your work um as a bellingham business that and people individuals mm -hmm. that go downtown Good. as much as we can and love where we live and love yeah. the like the culture the soul of bellingham yeah uh, we appreciate that your your goal is to keep it like to grow mm -hmm. we have yeah. to but yeah. also to keep that soul because mm -hmm. that's why i stayed here 14 years ago never yeah. left yeah, yeah. um could have yeah. gone anywhere any could have gone to the midwest yeah. but i decided not to <laughs> damn it yeah um so for those that are listening again i'll be doing the first five people that reach out so we've already probably name the first three, but the, the first five will, will get uh, an insider card and I'll explain more in the details. Um, cool. And Tiffany will probably do a disclaimer in the middle of the episode oh, yeah. or at middle of the end of the episode. Yeah. Um, and then to find you said downtown Bellingham partner, downtownbellingham.com. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. You can find out all about the programs, yeah. um, social media, great place. I follow you guys. I love all the, the videos, yeah, yeah, the content. Yeah. Um, is there any other good places to follow you besides uh, social media, Instagram, we just website. started a TikTok account. Oh, which snap. Really fun. So yeah, you're, are you doing dances? Out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> doing some I dabbing? I personally am not doing any dances. Um, yeah. um, our events and promotions coordinator, Natalie, manages yeah. all of she's that. Great. So yeah. she's fantastic. Um, some people just jive with TikTok. Yes. I'm not yeah. one of them. I, she had me do one of the trends. I can't remember what it was. And it was oh, kind of really? silly, but it turned out cute. Yeah, <laughs> nice. um, but yeah, downtownbellingham.com is a great way to just find out more about our organization. And then there is an opportunity to sign up for our general newsletter. Mm -hmm. So social media, our website, but Jenny, who is our marketing communications manager, does a really fantastic job of just like issuing mm -hmm. authentic newsletters. They're not mm -hmm. yeah. dry. They're actually very engaging and super um, informative. So we have a business newsletter that has really specific content. We also have a general newsletter and that's just where you can get caught up to speed on all the announcements, all the happenings, yeah. opportunities, but that's just another um, avenue to stay in touch with what we're doing. I love it. Yeah. And you, you both are ama you're amazing and your team is amazing. And we appreciate the collaboration that we've done. And we're at the Bel Building Bellingham team, the Live Bellingham team. We're like, yeah. we're here and we're excited for what you're doing. And we're always here to help Very and cool. support Thank what you, you guys are doing. Thank so, you. And we appreciate yeah. being on your show yeah. and just Thank having you. these really cool, unique programs um, and your podcast. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we didn't get, we didn't get canceled again. Yeah. I, I said it again. <laughs> <laughs> But this is the season finale. There's, I couldn't think of any better way, and I was talking with Tiffany about this. Yeah. Um, I couldn't think of any better way to cap off an already fantastic mm -hmm. season with you both. So thanks for joining us Very on the cool. season finale with only one beat from a construction crane. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for yeah. having us. Thank you. <laughs>